canal is a is a unique body of water because it's long and narrow, it's steep sided, and it's very deep. It's a fjord like structure. And the water that's in Hood Canal takes a long time to flush out, to exchange itself with the Puget Sound through the Admiralty Inlet and ultimately out to the Pacific Ocean. Hood Canal has attributes that make it naturally predisposed to having low oxygen down deep in the, in the bottom waters. So what are those characteristics? Well, one is, just as I mentioned, it flushes very slowly. The second is, naturally, it has high phytoplankton production, primary production, the creation of organic material. And then when that settles out, all of that carbon is going to be oxidized down deep and that's going to consume oxygen. As you have oil that floats on top of water, well Hood Canal has the fresher, warmer water that floats on top of the deeper, saltier water. And that creates a barrier in terms of getting oxygen down into the bottom waters. The thing that really started us with the, uh, with the concern was that we in 2002, in the fall, we'd had a fish kill. And it was uh, over by the potlatch area. And there were a number of fish on the beach, uh, some estimates up to like 50,000 fish or something. Although I didn't see those, uh, that, that sort of drove our concern to figure out what was going on with it. So this is a study, it's a three-year study, and it involves a lot of entities, organizations, not just the university, partners with state agencies, partners with the Hood Canal Salmon Enhancement Group, with USGS, with the counties, with the Skokomish tribe, as well as the Port Gamble Sklalem tribe, and a lot of other folks, to define a study that will monitor these um, variables both in Hood Canal as well as in the watershed. You have to understand what's going in the watershed because Hood Canal is a basin. To quantify those inputs, how the variables um, change with season, we also want to be thinking about how climate change might be affecting what we see right now. And then to put that into a computer model, and in this computer model, then we can test separately each one of these things. How much does a changing ocean boundary cause the oxygen to vary? How much does changing the Skokomish River flow cause oxygen to vary? What about the input from septic tanks? What about the input from um, nitrogen loading from different trees in our forests in the riparian areas. So all of these things we can do computationally to be able to evaluate and then give back to decision makers our best estimate of what's causing this condition. Currently there's a, a program, the Hood Canal Dissolved Oxygen Program, which is uh, comprised of over 40 uh, groups that are have come together to try to understand uh, about the the factors that are driving some of the ocean, the oxygen conditions in the canal, and then part of that group is also about understanding what sort of corrective actions can be done um, once we figure out the best way to do that. The Hood Canal Salmon Enhancer Group is involved in the dissolved oxygen program uh, in that it has provided uh, folks at a, both a staff level and a volunteer level to come and participate in the science program as part of the dissolved oxygen program. Uh, they've been able to come out and be a part of our uh, weekly monitoring, our citizens monitoring effort on the marine waters. It uh, grabs samples from uh, up in the northern part of the canal all the way up in the Bangor area, down through Hama and uh, Hoodsport, Potlatch around the corner into uh, Lynch Cove. Part of it's just about simple grab samples of water and that can be as simple as a, uh, a, a bottle that closes underwater and grabs samples at depth. It also can be a little more uh, complex. It can be things that are sensors that are actually out on the water, of which there uh, will be four shortly that will be big moorings that have sensor packages that go up and down in the water column on a regular basis to give us some indication of uh, the water and the condition of water and the salinity, the oxygen, the, the temperature, and those sorts of things, as well as the, the light, chlorophyll, and even some nutrient sensors that are there. So it can be sophisticated, it can be simple. Uh, some of it comes from the streams, some of it's in marine water, but it all helps to understand a bigger picture.